Now I'm going to switch gears uh, to talk uh, about postpartum mood disorders. And there are really a number of different things that fall under this category. The first is really not a disorder, the postpartum blues. So the postpartum blues is very common, affects the majority of women, maybe 70 to 80% after delivery. And this would be a situation where um, the mom reports like maybe feeling sad or hormonal, quote unquote, um, crying for no reason, but it's not like depression which, which affects her functioning and sort of like the, the totality of her experience. It's usually very superficial, like someone might say, um, you know, I'm crying, but I don't know why, or, you know, so, so, and, or um, feeling weepy. Um, very often they're extremely exhausted at the time. Um, and generally with some support and reassurance, this passes, but we do want to watch carefully and make sure that it's not, you know, the beginning of a depressive episode, something getting worse. Now, postpartum depression, <clears throat> you know, it's funny because there really isn't a formal diagnosis of postpartum depression or definition of postpartum depression in DSM-5. What there is is a specifier. So it's a major depressive episode with onset within four weeks after delivery. And one of the biggest surprises in my career was to see how much um, heated debate there is about this. So I was at a meeting several years ago when DSM-5 just came out with this specifier. They decided against going with a postpartum depression di um, diagnosis specifically. And that's because they did not see a uniting sort of biological etiology specifically for postpartum depression compared to non-postpartum depression. And it's true, there is a lot of heterogeneity around what we call postpartum depression. But the advo advocacy community, you know, the patient, patient uh, representatives really want there to be a separate diagnosis of postpartum depression because they don't so much care that there isn't one hormonal etiology underlying postpartum depression. They want people to really understand the context, that it's a woman who's depressed, she's caring for a newborn baby, she may or may not be breastfeeding, probably not getting a whole lot of sleep. You know, they want it to really convey the whole picture. And they don't want to be kind of like lumped into this, you know, major depressive disorder category. They really consider it to be a very unique situation. So it's interesting to hear that debate about it. Um, there's also some debate in our field, like say when we do research, like how far out can the onset be and still call it postpartum? So it's really an active ongoing debate. We'll talk about postpartum psychosis and we'll also talk about considerations for bipolar disorder in the postpartum. So postpartum depression is common, uh, affects, uh, you know, usually cited between about 10 to 15% of women after delivery. One of the biggest differences uh, between postpartum depression and depression that occurs other times is that the anxiety that is already comorbid with depression is even more comorbid with postpartum depression. So for example, women may often have obsessions as part of the picture for postpartum depression, a great number of them. And one of the most underappreciated things is probably the risk of uh, postpartum anxiety, even without uh, major depressive episodes. So women who've had pre-existing anxiety are at very high risk of it ramping up. The risk of anxiety in the postpartum is actually um, more consistent than the risk of depression. Some women who've never had anxiety disorders before often have a really severe onset in the postpartum as well. So it's something we definitely wanna be watching for.